Hi, welcome to the Brocade Campus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. Uh, this series, we're talking about uh, migrating from Cisco to Brocade uh, from a command line perspective. And uh, in this video in particular, we're going to talk about VLANs and, and um, uh, migrating from what Cisco called a trunk to a Brocade tagged VLAN. So they're exactly the same. Um, it's just a different terminology. And it's important to cover that terminology so what Cisco calls trunk, they mean multiple VLANs down a single interface. So um, basically tagging multiple VLANs down a single interface. Uh, trunk to brocade and almost every other vendor means uh, link aggregation or ether channel or combining multiple physical interfaces into one logical interface. So it's important when you're talking to someone specifically that is Cisco trained to, to understand what trunk means in that conversation. So, um, you know, sometimes you'll find yourself in the middle of a conversation where everyone's talking about trunking, but they mean completely different things. So it's important to uh, clarify that from the get-go. Uh, anyway, so we'll drop over here. So I have a Telnet session open to a Cisco and I have another open to a Brocade ICX 7250. Um, and so if we're trying to create a tagged interface uh, or trunked interface on the, on the Cisco side, uh, we'll go to config T. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create our VLAN. So we'll create a VLAN called uh, VLAN 20. So interface VLAN 20. Uh, so that's all I have to do to create it. Then I go to the interface where I wanna add that VLAN um, and I do a switch port mode trunk and, and add the, the trunk VLAN. So um, this is a fundamental difference between Brocade and Cisco. In Cisco, you create the VLAN and then you go to the interface and add that VLAN to the interface. In, in a Brocade world, you create the VLAN and then you add the interfaces to the VLAN. Um, so a um, very different way of thinking about it, but once you do it on the Brocade side a couple of times, it'll make a lot of sense to you and it's very quick to add multiple ports. So we're going to go to an interface here, interface gigabit ethernet um, 0 slash 10, for example. Um, and uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a switch port um, trunk. We need to encapsulate it as dot one Q, first of all. So encapsulation dot one Q. So we don't want it in auto mode. We got to make sure that it's encapsulation or it's trunk mode is dot one Q. Then we do a switch port mode trunk. So we don't want it in access mode, right? We want it in trunk mode. So access is what we would call untagged, meaning it does not send VLAN or receive VLAN numbers in the packet header. Um, in mode trunk, it does. So it so packets that go out get sent out with the uh, with the VLAN tag in the in the packet header. Um, okay, so switch for mode trunk and then switch port trunk, and you need to tell it what, uh, which ones you're allowing, right? So in this case, we do allowed, um, and then VLAN, and you could do, you could do uh, all here, for example, you could do a range. Um, so, so you have multiple ways to do this. So we could do all, but uh, in our opinion, in Brocade's opinion, doing all is a bit of a security issue because you're not sure where your VLANs are going to go, right? You're basically allowing any port, um, uh, any VLAN on that, on that particular interface. So um, if I was a hacker, I could just put my interface in whatever VLAN I wanted to and have access to that VLAN if I had all there. Um, if, I, if I allow a specific VLAN number, then I am very controlled in what VLAN goes where. So I'm gonna do a VLAN 20 and that's it. So only VLAN 20 is allowed on that interface. Okay, so um, if we look at my running config, oops, sorry, I'm used to the brocade side where I can do a show from anywhere. Um, so if we look at my interface 10 here, Right, so I've done encapsulation dot one Q. So for uh, eight or two dot one Q, I've allowed VLAN twenty, and it's in mode trunk. Right, so those are the three pieces I need. Plus, I had to build the VLAN in the first place. So the way we do that on the brocade side, go to config T, we create our VLAN, so VLAN twenty, 
And what we're going to do now is I don't need to drop out and go to the interface right from the VLAN here. I can just do a tagged uh, Ethernet uh, 1 slash 0 slash well, 1 slash 1 slash 10. So it tells me it added it in there. So that's all I have to do, right? Um, and I could do a range of interfaces there, right? So I could have said uh, to one slash one slash, you know, 15. Um, if I do that, it's going to tell me one's already in there. So I could do a range of interfaces, for example. Um, and so, so um, it's as easy as that. So when you take, when you do that, when you add a tag there, it takes it out of the default VLAN, which is VLAN one. Um, so it's it's in untagged or access mode in VLAN one by default. Um, so when you tag it, it takes it out of VLAN one and puts it into whatever VLAN you want. And and you know, you can have as many tagged VLANs on an interface, um, but you can only have one untagged. So um, if I wanted to add another VLAN, for example, I could do a VLAN thirty tag e uh, one slash one slash ten. Right, and uh, you you know you can add as many tag VLANs as you want. So easy as that. And then if we look at the show run, rather than having those VLANs under the interface, I have those VLANs here under the VLAN itself. So I created the VLAN, and then I have the tag interface showing under there. Okay, so uh, you know fundamentally different the way you think about it, but it makes a lot of sense on the brocade side once you uh, you know once you see it and do it once or twice. Okay, so that's it for that. Thanks for joining, and take care.